This, uh, I, I have to tell you, as I enter my 85th, eight, eight, Christ, no, 87th year, <laughs> uh, is going to be my last performance, my swan song uh, for singing for money. Because <laughs> there's, no, there's no way I'll stop singing as long as the voice hangs out. Well, that's all fine, yeah. They've got friends from all over. And uh, years ago, uh, I think our next pal uh, must have heard a record of something in the States, because when he heard I was going to a recording studio, uh, Fellside, up in the Lake District, or near Workington, it's not really the beautiful lakeside, is it, near Workington, uh, he came over just to play in the records. And I happened to, for about at least four LPs, well, CDs that I've done, I nearly, I nearly, nearly said cylinders then. <laughs> The spinner's, never, uh, the spinner's never made a CD. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? Now there's all kinds of pirates on the, on the market, so you can buy spinner's uh, CDs if you want to. Anyhow, I, I digress. Uh, I'd like you to meet all the way from uh, New York, Mr. Bob Conroy on banjo. Say hello. Say hello. Hello, everybody. That's enough. <laughs> Here's one of the songs that I put in the program, especially because Bob plays fantastic banjo and he likes this particular song. And I'm very pleased because it's one that I wrote. <laughs> it's about the uh, very important part of the shipping industry. In 1866, people were going mad for tea which came at that stage from China. Uh, they used to, uh, all our tea used to come from China until uh, we decided it was a good idea to place it in one of our colonies. So it, they took the plants and they put them in India. So we started buying the tea from India, and still do apparently. Uh, so it, the tea races were very important because the first clipper ship that came in, uh, carrying the tea, uh, got a huge bonus, like £500 for the skipper and like £500 to be shared out amongst the crew. A pretty large crew. The crews average about 30 or 40 people, which is very highly man-powered. Man the, old, the old sailing ships used to have about 12 crew. But these clipper ships, because they, they could sail to China in back in, in less than 200 days, uh, Cutty Sark came a little bit later. So they called her a tea clipper, but she wasn't really. She's a bit late for the. Uh, she, she was launched in 68, and the, the 66 was about the last great race. And people would bet huge fortunes on the outcome of this particular race. And what happened in 66, which I think was the last important one, uh, I'll tell you in the song. Here we go. It, it, you follow the course of the other clipper ships. The two, there was two Scottish ships. They just built, uh, rather copying the Yanks, because the Yanks were way ahead technically on sailing ships. Uh, but they didn't last very long, because they were made out of softwood. But we've still got the, uh, the uh, Cutty Sark. And there's, I don't think there's any American boats left, are there? They, they all rotted away because they're made of softwood. <laughs> The aerial and the typing. Eighteen famous clipper ships in Fu Chow's Pagoda Bay. Wait to load new seasons, tea, and then be on their way. Thousands had been wagered, the caps were in the ring. The favourites were the fiery cross, the aerial and typing. The aerial and Taipei. At last each hull was loaded tight with a million pounds of tea. Then after towing down the mill was headed for the sea. Ghosting through the monsoon, whistling for the wind, 
the captain's key and the killing of the aerial anti pain the aerial anti pain and across the Indian Ocean every stitch of canvas spread Jamie Green ring tails and moon sails crowning each mast head the constant southeast trade winds made the rig and sing and in the lead was fiery cross from the aerial anti Lovely job. The aerial anti And around the Cape and northwards in the Atlantic stormy weather and across the Bay of Biscay these races went together Steer starboard for the channel See the yard arm swing and the living gale from west south west through the aerial anti ping. The aerial anti ping. For nine and ninety days, no less, these ocean greyhounds vied and he tied up in the London docks on the same evening tide. An announcement to the punters disappointment would bring Cause the race was declared a draw with the aerial anti -ping. The aerial anti -ping. So I held to Bonnie Scotland, her captains and her ships And to the glorious tea race of 1866 now artists recreate those days when the clipper shepherds came The wicked marble at the splendour of the aerial anti -ping. The aerial anti Thank you very much.